From the moment I was announced as a TEDx speaker 50 days ago, I decided to collect all of my waste. And here it is. I am trying to live zero waste. What does that mean? Well, that means I actively try to reduce the amount of waste I produce, particularly that which can't be reduced, reused, recycled, or repurposed. While we're waiting for governments to make the big changes and companies to create innovation, there is so much we, as an individual, can do. Many of you will have seen Blue Planet and know the crisis our world is in with plastic pollution. You might be sitting there thinking, what difference can we actually make? Won't it be insignificant? Well, I'm here to tell you we can make a huge difference. So picture this. It's New Year's 2018. I'm spending the festivities with my friends and family on the east coast of Scotland in a quaint coastal village called Ely. It's a new year and a clean slate, and people are talking about New Year's resolutions. But this year, I could not think of one. So we go on our New Year's Day walk, and we're meandering through the green golf course paths and along the white sandy beaches, when suddenly, it hits me. Piles of plastic waste. For years as a geography student, I studied the impacts we make on our planet. But it took it having me right in the face to realize I had to make a difference. I had to make a change. So I took myself home and I'm feeling rejuvenated and energized, motivated to reduce my waste, save the turtles and all that. And I thought, this will be fine. I know just how bad plastic is. I just need to cut it out and find alternatives for everything. So I go home, but then I look in my fridge. I pull open a cupboard. And then the worst one, I peered into my bathroom. I was drowning in plastic. I could not go cold turkey. So let's fast forward to where I am now. I'm a year and a half in and I've found my groove. Slowly phasing things out and educating myself. Shampoo bottles went to shampoo bars. Fruit and veg in excess plastic packaging just went loose into my baskets. And single-use disposable items went to reusables I carry around with me every single day. So you've all got to do this perfectly, right? We'll see. If you're sitting there thinking, I don't care, or I definitely can't make a difference, let me introduce you to my cousin, Lucy. She's the total opposite to me in every way, a glam hairdresser from Dundee. And recycling and the environment were far from her everyday thoughts. Even with her little cousin banging on about it, she didn't seem to make a change. That was until one day, driving five minutes to the gym, she pulled into her local supermarket to buy a bottle of water, like she did every time. But this time, something was stopping her. So she walked to the next aisle, picked up a reusable bottle, took it to the gym, and filled it up at the tap. Magic. Something clicked for her. She made the connection between her actions and our world. Living environmentally is infectious. So I want to tell you three facts about recycling, which will explain just how important living with less waste really is. Number one, the science. Did you know most things can't be recycled, but are actually downcycled? When the material goes in, it's shredded and melted and comes out weaker than before. Glass and metal can reform quite strong, 
but plastic and paper are literally torn to shreds. Recycling is just prolonging the inevitable that these things are going to end up in landfill. And number two, us humans. It is so easy to contaminate our recycling, whether that means not washing out something properly or putting the wrong thing in the wrong bin. As soon as a load is contaminated, it's not worth the time, effort, or money to sort it out. You might realize that some councils recycle everything, but yours maybe only takes plastic bottles. The recycling process is so complicated, and some facilities are just more advanced than others. It feels like you need a PhD in recycling just to get it right. Just one person making a mistake can send a whole street's worth of recycling straight to landfill. And the third fact is about politics. Last year, China, previously the world's largest importer of waste, said it was not going to be the world's dumping ground anymore. And rightly so. And now the UK is being overwhelmed by the amount of waste we're producing. And now some countries are sending it back, so we better get a move on. Now, do you remember when I ha said you had to do this perfectly? How about I leave you with just one switch? It's something we all drink and a change we can all make. Milk. So I want you to picture this. The average family of four's yearly consumption of milk. Got it? Actually, don't picture it. Here it is. So what if this family, or you, was to switch from milk in plastic bottles back to the way it used to be, delivered to your doorstep a plastic solution, milk bottles? And on these glass bottles, the only form of waste is a small foil cap. And once you get enough of them, you can scrumple them into a bowl and recycle them, just like any other item. So instead of all of this waste, all you would produce is this. If every single person here today was to decide to cut out one thing each day for a year, we would save a million things going to landfill. You can make that connection. You can start with that single-use plastic bottle of water we have in our bags we can decide to make that the last one. When you buy something, it's had a past. You are its present. What will be its future? What will you leave behind as your legacy? Thank you. <laughs>